Hi, welcome back to the lecture series on GPU architectures and programming. So, in the last lecture, we have been discussing about CUDA streams and how overlapped execution can be performed across streams. And in that regard, we have set up a nice example here of like how we can have overlapped execution in terms of over, I mean, uh, oh, sorry, I would bet it is better to say overlapping the execution and data transfer. And we also mentioned that in case we have a device where we have a support for duplex PCI bus, then I can overlap two data transfers happening in uh, different devices and happening in different uh, directions. So, uh, le let us assume that we have a normal PCI express bus as is the case here. So, we can overlap execution in the GPU device along with a one sided data transfer. Now, if you are really engaging different streams to perform concurrent execution, you may also require sometimes to synchronize the executions because in general streams are asynchronous. So, for that CUDA will provide you several synchronization primitives. In case you want the host program to wait till all the CUDA devices, all the streams executing on the CUDA device uh, to finish, you can use the first option CUDA device synchronize. If you want a single stream to you, if you want the host program to wait at point where you want the single stream to synchronize, you execute CUDA stream synchronize with the option that I mean you have to you have to give the argument which is the which, which specific stream you want to synchronize at that point. If you want to synchronize an event in a stream on a, on a specific event in a stream, then you have to give this command CUDA stream wait event, right. So, you are saying that well this stream should wait for this event to happen. So, let us again I mean enumerate the options. You, you want all the streams to synchronize at some point. So, that is CUDA device synchronize some at some point in the host program. If you want to synchronize a specific stream, you use CUDA stream synchronize. If you want CUDA stream wait event, I mean you, you, you want uh, that a stream will synchronize in, an, in a specific event uh, to a specific event then you use CUDA stream wait event. And uh, if you want synchronizing across streams using an event, then of course, you do not need to specify the stream, you just specify the event and you have the command CUDA event synchronize just with the event argument. So, you synchronize all the streams with this event. So, now coming to our concurrency example. So, <coughs> we will try to see how overlapped execution can be attained. So, let us say you have a main where you you, I mean the, the this part of the code is again quite same. You get the device properties. You are saying that in which device what is executing and all that, and then uh, you can perform. The, well, this is the piece of code that is necessary. I mean to figure out whether you have support for concurrent execution or not. So that's actually I mean from the device property structure, you can figure out the CUDA runtime system's major and minor number, and using these numbers, you can figure out how much is the execution support. So uh, in case the major is less than 3 and uh, <coughs> or the device major is equal to 3 and uh, uh, less than 5, uh, well in that case, uh, in case it is less than 3, you do not have any support for concurrent execution. So, CUDA kernels will be serialized. Now, uh, and, uh, of, uh, and also there is this issue with major and minor values. So, based on this choice I mean wh what is the major and minor value of the CUDA runtime system there would be I mean the, your your device property will contain I mean whether I mean the, the value 0 or 1 for the concurrent kernels flag and that would tell you whether there is support or not. And also uh, I mean there are two possible checks here this is what I am trying to say that you can have concurrent execution fully or you can have limited concurrent execution. I mean in the other case uh, which is this else like you satisfy the major and minor requirements like let us say you have major 3 or, um, or, or le and uh, minor less than 5, then, uh, in, then uh, in case uh, your CUDA kernels uh, is uh, I mean for those devices where the major version is earlier to the earlier to 3 or it is equal to 3, but the minor version is the minor number is earlier to 5 for those devices you if you have CUDA kernels command uh, set to 1 for the earlier devices the, the thing is uh, you, you do not have a support for something called hyper queue. So, you will have concurrency support, but not fully 
we will see what is that. And uh, in case you, you are not getting inside this check, that is that means your CUDA runtime systems uh, is saying that well, for the GPU device you are talking about, the major number is greater than 3 or the major number is equal to 3, but the minor is greater than 5. For that, you have uh, compute capability and uh, uh, which is suitable for concurrent execution, right. So, it will your code here, the example we are talking about here will just say that yes, you have concurrent execution capability and you, it will it will also specify what exact is the major and minor value and uh, what is, so that would that would be a kind of indicator of what is the amount of compute capability supported, right. Now, something you have interesting here that what is this hyper queue thing. So, there are earlier GPU devices where you have support for concurrent execution, but that is limited. So, let us try and understand what is this limitation. So, consider this situation that well, you have got streams and you have got multiple kernels which are executing on the streams. So, you, are, you want to simulate execute a task graph where you have the kernels A, B and C queued up, right. Let us call their instances the first, second uh, and first all the first instances of A, B and C. You want A to finish, then B to work and C want to work on the data that B, work, B, B produces, things like that. Maybe you have other instances of these kernels sequenced in some other stream and you have the same kernels third instances sequenced in some other stream. The issue is in CUDA older runtime systems, these streams will finally get into a job queue where things are pretty much serialized. So, you may have, I am just drawing an option here, A1 followed by B1 followed by C1 followed by A2 followed by B2 followed by C2 so on so forth. And then the system is trying to identify what is the parallelism available. It does not see any parallelism here because of these dependencies, does not see parallelism here because of the dependencies. It only figures that these are the two that can be really executed in parallel. Whereas, we can see that well A1, A2, A3 can be executed in parallel, B1, B2, B3 can be executed in parallel and C1, C2, C3 can be executed in parallel, right. So, this issue with I mean the final hardware queue has been resolved with a architectural support of some structure called hyper queue, where through which it is actually able to see the dependency structure and see what is the full scope of concurrent execution that is possible across the different streams. So, we are, we are not going to more architectural details, you can read NVIDIA documents that are widely available. So, for this example, let us uh, let us uh, first uh, see that <coughs> how things can be, uh, I mean how we can have overlapped execution. So, <coughs> what we will first do is we will figure out what is the maximum number of streams uh, that we can have. So, <coughs> we set up this maximum number of streams and we, because we will be declaring that number, number of streams and all that. So, yeah, let us say we, we first uh, initialize the host side address on which to work on. So, let us say HA and HB are the host side address which are being malloced and pinned to the host side memory. So, that we have support for asynchronous memory copy and also we uh, we perform allocation for this GPU reference and uh, ho I mean host reference arrays here, right. And then we initialize all these data structures, uh, uh, host side arrays H A H B and uh, uh, <coughs> and then on the device side, we actually create uh, the different uh, uh, device arrays A, B and C, right, for the in the global memory, in the device global memory, yes. So, uh, so once this is performed, then <coughs> for bookkeeping purposes, we create, we define two CUDA events, start and stop, and set them up here for recording, right? So we just create the CUDA events, and the moment we execute this function called CUDA event create, so the timing of uh, whatever is going on next will uh, they will start recording from this point in the start and stop data structures, right? And then <coughs> So, uh, sorry. Uh, so, here we just create the events and later on when we will have CUDA event record, that is the point from which the start and stop events will actually start recording the 
timings, right? So here we are just uh, creating, I mean, declaring the events and creating their corresponding objects, and then. Uh, let's uh, we we'll just, we are just performing suitable declarations of the grid and block dimensions. I mean, using code similar to whatever we have discussed earlier, and uh, we perform normal memory copy here just to show a normal execution. So you copy the host side data to the device side data HA to HB, and uh, you perform. And before this, uh, I mean, copy you actually start logging the timing using a CUDA event record. You uh, in in the in the timer start in the event start, and here you record the timing in the event stop. So, you actually have uh, the two timings uh, before and after the synchronous, I mean the normal sequential data transfers, right. So, for a normal sequential data transfer, what is the time elapsed uh, that we will now, we can now check through a CUDA event elapsed time uh, API by supplying it with this recorded times in this CUDA events uh, at, at these points in the variable start and stop, right. So, if you supply these two time point variables to this uh, API, you get the value reported. And of course, <coughs> after the CUDA event required, uh, CUDA, sorry, CUDA event record, you will have a CUDA event synchronized call uh, for the stop event. Now, in that way, we are just doing a bookkeeping, we are just giving an example like how can you perform bookkeeping for all the normal calls, right. Again, we have a CUDA event record for start and you have a CUDA event record for stop and in between you make a normal kernel call for a space for, for let us say this is a sum of address calculation for that kernel without using the asynchronous API, right. So then, I mean we have we are having everything together in the same program. So for that we are again performing a CUDA event synchronize on stop here just to ensure that the full stream, the default stream here synchronizes on this event. And then we can just uh, <coughs> check the elapsed time and all that, right. Now, <coughs> in case I want to uh, see that <coughs> what is, I mean, what is the, I mean, uh, I will also like to see what is the time required for doing normal sequential copy from the device side to the GPU CPU side. Uh, we can make uh, again and record a start event and a stop event, and in between, I can copy back the data from the device to host and uh, uh, once that is done and I, I can I can compute the elapsed time here and I can print f I mean this uh, measured timings uh, through the print f APIs here. So, I can just uh, check what is the normal execution time for this particular GPU device for a normal host to device copy for a normal device to host copy for a normal sequential kernel execution and what is the total time. The reason we are doing this and we are trying to show you usage of this API is soon we will be using this also for the asynchronous case and compare the performance statistics. So, now let us start with the asynchronous case. So, we define this uh, number of streams, the maximum number of streams which are supported as was uh, gathered from the system earlier. And then for each stream, we start dispatching asynchronous commands, right. So, uh, we have a loop. Uh, uh, running from 0 up to the number of streams uh, less than that. So, that it will run this many number of times. Every time you are creating one stream by invoking the CUDA stream create command for uh, the stream variable that is uh, that has been declared. For the stream, you have a start, uh, you, you start recording the timing for using the start event variable and inside then you, I mean inside this loop, you, you define another loop through which now, you start dispatching data from the host side to the device side in chunks, right. So, for, <coughs> so in this case what we are doing is, uh, first you have this loop, sorry, I mean this, so we do not have a, I mean, uh, first we have a loop using which you create all the different streams, then you launch this loop through which for each stream, you start performing asynchronous data transfer. So, for the first stream, you perf you uh, you uh, give uh, you you provide data from the host to the device uh, with a we, we in, in some chunk now the, now the chunk size has been decided by this i offset value as you can see so this is actually telling you that well you want to actually uh, execute I, I mean you you want actually that well this stream will uh, copy data of this memory chunk. 
So, just uh, if we want to illustrate through an example, so the, let us say this is the overall memory chunk uh, that you want to copy the total size of the buffer and let us say that you have you, you want you want uh, that in each memory copy command you copy one, ch one chunk of the data. Let us say the chunk size is this i element. And in each iteration, you set the offset value, uh, I mean, by one more successive, I mean, amount, you, you just shift it by an amount that is equal to i element. You, so, you copy data from here to here, then from here, then from here, I mean, it is all differing by the i element size like this. And uh, also, <coughs> in each, each, uh, I mean, in each uh, iteration, you, then you have to specify the number of bytes. So, this is the chunk size in terms of number of elements. Of course, you have to specify what is the total number of elements you want to, uh, we, you want to actually, uh, what, is, what is the total number of bytes these elements occupy. So, that is expected in this i bytes point, which we have calculated earlier here as you can see. So, number of elements multiplied by the size of the data type that is float, that is giving you the i bytes. So, this is the chunk size. So, you choose it here and then inside this loop for each of the streams you are copying one chunk of data right inside this loop for each uh, of the streams you are copying one chunk of data for input array uh, ha to the output uh, uh, device array da input array hb to the device array db and so on so forth right and after this copying from the input uh, uh, host side array to the device array you also you now you make the asynchronous call to the to launch the kernel on this uh, on this stream. So, you launch one kernel version of, uh, of some arrays. So, to the str IS stream right. Of course, you want this kernel to work on that specific data chunk that has been copied right. So, uh, if we just uh, draw an example, let us say in general this is the host side elements. So, in the ith iteration, you have copied this data and this data to the device side and so, you have two of these uh, segments and you want in, uh, in the i stream, the kernel launch event will only work on this part. In the next stream, the kernel launches work on the next part, so on so forth like that. So, essentially you have launched uh, in the full iterations of the loop, you have launched one kernel instance in each of the streams and in e with each launch the kernel instance is working on that chunk of data that has been copied right. Uh, so, in that way you have all the streams engaged with executing some part of the original data de de or original amount of data right. Uh, so, uh, inside this loop in one full iteration of this loop uh, that means, uh, you iterate through across all the streams right and uh, each stream is responsible for copying some uh, I mean some specific chunk of input data and uh, uh, since there are two input arrays each stream I mean uh, I mean in, in one iteration of the loop you are launching two chunks of data from two input arrays to the device you are launching one kernel instance into the inside that stream to work on these two copied instances of chunks of data and then you are launching another copy command in the same stream to copy back the data execute uh, data that is produced by this kernel on this specific stream back to the host side right. So, all that you are doing is you are breaking the overall copy over overall copy to the device overall kernel execution and overall copy to the host operations into small chunks and each chunk is perform the each the operations of each of for corresponding to each of the chunks are executed in different streams. What will have with the advantage? The advantage will be the pipeline execution that we have discussed earlier. The different streams will have some amount of copy, some amount of uh, some amount of data to uh, work on and some amount of copy back right. So, they will be able to overlap and they will be able to make good use 
of the devices. So, uh, if I just take an example and draw this figure. So, like in stream 1, I have an H2D copy of a chunk for array. So, let us say this is stream 1, you make a copy of array, some chunk, then an H2D copy of some array B, then you execute the kernel, right. So, this is the first chunk, right. And then you have a device to host copy of the first chunk. Now, this can of course, overlap with certain operations, we are assuming that the copies cannot overlap. So, here when in stream 1, let us say here we have stream 2, when in stream 1, we have the kernel operations, it can overlap with the H2D co uh, copy in of stream 2 of, of the second chunk. So, this, this uh, index is for the chunk, in first stream you are copying the first chunk, right. So, a chunk would be the first chunk of memory, the second chunk of memory, the third chunk of memory. In each chunk, I have this ILM number of elements, the size is I bytes and all that. So, this will overlap, right. And I can also have an H2, so this is H2D A, second chunk. I can have H2D of array B, second chunk. I can launch the second kernel instance here, right. So, this will be the overlap in stream 2 and then uh, I, I also have the D2 device to host for the second chunk happening, right. Uh, <coughs> now, in the stream 3, I can also have when this kernel execution is going on, this is the point where I can start doing the H2D copy of the third chunk in the third stream for the array A followed by array B and so on and so forth, right. So, we have this kind of overlapped execution and that will actually help me to get the pipeline performance benefit like we have been discussing earlier. Right. So, uh, we can we can do it like uh, as we have discussed and then we can uh, once uh, we are out of the loop, you, st you, you use the stop timer and then we can actually measure what is the execution time. And here we have just uh, the normal freeing events and destroy events like we do for, uh, for freeing and resetting the device. Now, uh, <coughs> so uh, that is one way to perform the uh, the concurrent parallel execution and then <coughs> with that we can have certain statistics. So, uh, we, we, I mean there is no point in reading out the statistics, it is for you to see that uh, what are the execution times uh, for in, in case uh, you have uh <coughs> in, in, in I mean I mean how much time you have overlaps across streams, what is the effective speed up, how much of overlap as you can see that. So, these are the measure timings you have that mem copy time from host to device, mem copy time from device to host side for this specific vector size. So, these are all specific to our K40 GPU. So, you can set off maximum 32 streams here, right. I mean, I mean, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are working with 4 streams here and uh, we are using this vector size. We have launched the kernel with this grid and block setting and you have the mem copy times uh, for the host to device, device to it, the kernel execution time and all that. Now, with the optimization of using concurrency by, uh, by exploiting the streams, streams, you have overlapped the four streams to get a reduced execution time of 401 millisecond, right. So, that is the advantage we can see here from overlapped execution. Now, uh, just to highlight that this is not the only possibility, there was also another possibility. What we did were we are copying data in chunks and overlapping the data chunk copies with the kernel execution. But let us say we do it in a breadth first order, that is for each stream, uh, instead of uh, iterating across streams and letting each stream copy the data in chunk, uh, let us say uh, for each stream, first we copy all the data in, then for each stream, we, we execute all the kernels in parallel on the data and then for each stream, we copy back all the data, right. So, that can also be an option. So, essentially we are saying that, uh, so here we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are also using the streams, but as you can see we are not overlapping uh, the, <coughs> the host to device copies with the kernel execution, but rather we are 
dividing the copy operation across streams. So, let us say this is my input array and uh, you have stream 1, stream 2, stream 3. You divide the stream to three parts and you ask stream 1 to do some copy, then stream 2 to do some copy and stream 3 to do some copy and in effect you have the entire thing copied. right? So, <coughs> in that way uh, with respect to uh, uh, the streams, uh, you do not have uh, much, uh, I mean uh, at this stage you do not have uh, some, uh, w w I mean advantage because uh, well uh, at this stage what is happening is you are asking stream 1 to perform a copy, then stream 2 is perform a copy and stream 3 is performing a copy, right. But uh, if I look at the scenario uh, that uh, with respect to timing and say <coughs> uh, now once these copies are done, right. So, uh, <coughs> you have uh, the first stream if you look into the program. So, the first stream has made a copy from the offset up to this size, right. The second stream uh, and the first stream will next perform the copy up to this size, right. Let us uh, and then uh, after executing this loop, then you execute the other loop through which you again have some asynchronous dispatch of comments uh, using which you are launch each of the streams are launching their respective kernels. And after that you have another third loop through which you are again executing asynchronous comments for uh, copying back the data where each of the streams are responsible for copying back certain chunks uh, as per uh, we have, I, mean, I mean as per we are directing here that which stream will copy back which chunk, right. So, overall uh, if we look at well what will be the overlapped executions, so what do we really have? So, you have an uh, H2D copy, uh, let us say uh, we are just trying to write the example. So, you have an H2D copy of array A followed by an H2D copy of array B, right. And then, so this is happening for some stream 1 and then for stream 2, while this is going on nothing can happen, but now when this stream 1 has finished the copying for the first and the second arrays for whatever chunk size it is supposed to do, then the stream 2 can do its copy, right. So, it has the H2D copy of the chunk for which it is responsible in array A and then H2D copy for the chunk for which it is responsible in array B. But while this is going on, we can have uh, the kernel for the stream 1 to execute somewhere here, right, because there has been by this time this is going on and this is, a, this is an asynchronous API, right. So, you have just launched these commands, then you launch these commands and then you launch the copy back commands, right. So, the host program has just launched all these commands and moved out, right. This is where the action is happening and the CUDA runtime system is trying to manage the executions in the concurrent streams of, for the GPU, right. So, here we do not have sequentialization, but uh, so these are all launched, but when they are executing this will be sequentialized, but then when for the next stream the copying is happening, you can have the kernel execution, right. And then for the third stream let us say you have uh, the copy, uh, the, the copies that are starting for the its chunk H2D for array A, then H2D for array B. This is the time when the kernel can execute here for the second stream, right. And uh, at some point of time I, I, I will also have uh, to copy back the data here. So, you can go on and construct the rest of the picture here like we are just trying to show that earlier we have been uh, getting overlapped execution at a granularity, but here we will be getting overlapped execution at a different granularity because this is breadth first. You you do the copies for A and followed uh, for, 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 for one stream entirely and then uh, for the next stream when you do the copy at that time you can execute the first kernel, right. <coughs> so, it is all about how you are uh, actually issuing the commands and uh, you can either issue them in a depth first order or uh, so uh, or you can issue them breadth first. Uh, we are saying breadth first because as you can see why this is breadth first, you, fa you, you break the execution of the original program into streams 
across the breadth of the program. So, you first kind of you, you try to submit all the copy commands for the host to device copies. Then you try to submit all the kernel launch commands in another loop. Uh, so you go you go into streaming action at 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 the, at, uh, at, 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 the, at the second level. Once you have covered the breadth of all the streams at the second level, then you go to the third level. In the in the third level, you now cover across all streams the breadth across all streams at the third level, right? So earlier was the breadth first order of uh, streaming uh, concurrency. Here we have a uh, uh, sorry earlier was the depth first order of streaming concurrency. Whereas, here we have a breadth first order of streaming concurrency and uh, we can also have similar execution speed ups here. So, it really is not the case that we, we get less speed up in one case or more speed up in the other. It is just like in what way you want to uh, execute the comments and so that you can have overlapped execution. And uh, this would be some of the nice references from which we actually uh, figured out what would be the important uh, uh, text uh, that go into our presentation. You know, some, some we have borrowed pictures as well as uh, uh, text items from these references. And uh, so these are the OpenCL and this is the, this is the CUDA reference. This is a very nice book on professional CUDA programming. So with this, we will like to end our lectures for this week and thank you.